Welcome to block one of the EQ7 Jump Start Sew Along. Let's get started. Open up EQ7 and on your screen you should see the project helper window. Here on the create a new project tab we'll give our project a name. Click in the box and type Jump Start Sew Along. We'll work in the same project throughout the series. Click OK. And here I am already on the quilt work table. If you're on one of the other work tables, just go up to the top and click the Work on Quilt button. Now let's just take a moment to look around our screen. Here at the very top, you'll see the name that we just typed for our project. Under that is the menu bar. All these tools under that are part of the project toolbar. Over here on the right, we have the quilt toolbar. And down here at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the layer tabs. Now we're going to set up a very basic quilt layout. This isn't necessarily the quilt you have to make when we're done sewing our blocks. We'll talk about other quilt layout options later in the series. Go up to the menu bar and click Quilt, New Quilt, Horizontal. Then go down to the bottom of your screen and click the Layout tab. Here's where we'll set up the basic information about our quilt. Under number of blocks, for both horizontal and vertical, we want to set it to 2. And under finish size of blocks, put a check next to keep width and height equal. This will keep our block spaces square. Now you'll see my block size is already set to 9 by 9. If yours isn't, you can drag these little slider bars here to change the size. You can also double click on these numbers and then type in a new size if you'd prefer to do it that way. Now just a note about block size for this sew along. You don't necessarily have to make your blocks 9 inches like I am. This is EQ7 so you can print your block patterns at any size you like. But to make your life easier I'll give you this advice. All of the sew along blocks are based on a 9 patch grid. So pick a block size that's a multiple of 3 such as 3 inches, 6 inches, 9 inches, 12 inches, and so on. That way you'll be working with easy to measure numbers. Now go back down to the bottom of your screen and click the Layer 1 tab. We've got a nice simple quilt layout waiting for blocks. Now your project sketchbook holds all the pieces or the ingredients for your quilt. You can add items to your sketchbook through the libraries. So let's go check out the block library. On the menu bar, click Libraries, Block Library. The EQ7 Block Library has over 5,000 block patterns to choose from, and with EQ7 you can also draw your own blocks too. Now over here on the left, you'll find the categories and styles of blocks that are available in the library. I'm going to click this little minus sign so that you can see the other categories that are available here in the library. I'm going to expand that out again by clicking the plus sign. Now here under Classic Piece, I want to scroll down and find the style called Nine Patch. Here it is, so I'm going to click on it. And on the right you'll find the blocks. Now in this style alone there are 61 block patterns. If you hover your mouse over one of the blocks, a little tooltip will appear with the block name. This one's called Eccentric Star and it's the one I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on it to select it. And notice this blue outline around the block. That lets us know it's the one that's selected. Come down here and click the Add to Sketchbook button. And you'll notice that the block disappears, letting us know it's been put into the sketchbook. Now, it doesn't permanently remove this block from the library. The next time I open up the library, it'll be back in here in the nine patch style. It's just letting us know that it's been added this time. Now, I want to scroll down and I'm looking for a block called Rolling Stone. And here it is. So hover my mouse and see it says Rolling Stone there. So I'm going to click on it to select it. Remember that blue outline. And then come down here and click Add to Sketchbook. Now if you don't like using this little scroll bar here, you can also use the arrow button to move through the blocks. Or you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to scroll between the blocks. So the next block we're looking for is called Greek Cross. Here it is. So blue line around it means it's selected. Click Add to Sketchbook. 
Now back over here on the left, click Nine Patch Stars, and we're looking for the block called Twin Star. So click to select and add to sketchbook. Now these are the four blocks that we're going to work with in this series. So we're done with the block library, so click Close to put it away. Now we're back here on the quilt work table. On the right toolbar, click the Set Block tool. The Blocks palette will appear and you'll see the four blocks that we just copied from the library. Click on the Greek Cross block and notice the blue outline around it, letting us know that's the selected block. Move your cursor over to the top left space in your quilt and click to place the block there. Now you also have the option to drag and drop blocks onto your quilt layout. I'll show you how that works. I'm going to edit undo to get rid of this block again and then I'll come over to the palette and click on the block and drag it over to the quilt and it'll pop into place. Now this is all the work we're going to do with this quilt today so I'm going to save it to my sketchbook. Come up to the project toolbar and click the add to sketchbook button. This saves our in progress quilt so we can use it again next time. Now we're ready to print the pattern for this block. Over on the right toolbar again, click the Select tool at the very top. Then click on the block to select it. Notice the green outline. And then come up to the Project toolbar and click the Print button. I'm going to show you how to print the rotary cutting chart today, but if you would prefer to make this block using templates or the foundation pattern, feel free to print those instead. So I'm going to click Rotary Cutting, and the Print dialog box appears. It's important to remember that in EQ7 we are always working with finished sizes. This means the size of the block when all the seams have been sewn, including the four side seams of the block. So here in the print dialog we see that it says finished block size. You'll see that the size we set for the block back when we were working on the layout tab is automatically filled in for us, the 9 inches by 9 inches. If you would like to change that size, just click here for custom block size and type in a different size. I want to use the 9 inches though, so I'm going to switch it back to use size from quilt. You'll also see that the, seam, the standard quarter inch seam allowance is filled in for us too. So go ahead and click preview, and this is what a rotary cutting chart looks like. Now I'm going to zoom in so we can get a better look at it here. Now you may be wondering how to read these rotary cutting charts. Here for patch A, which are the, quarter, the half square triangles and the corners, this means that we need to cut a strip of fabric that is 3 and 7 8 inch wide. From this strip we need to cut squares that are 3 and 7 8 inches. And each of those squares should be cut diagonally to form two triangles. We need four red triangles and four yellow triangles for one block. Now if you're ready to print, you can go ahead and click the print button. But if you're not, you can just click close and then close again to return to the quilt work table. Now you want to make sure that you click the Save button to save all the work that we've done here before you close EQ7. Now take your pattern to your cutting table in your sewing machine and get to work. I'll meet you back at the DUEQ blog on May 16th to share our sewn blocks.